When you are an older brother with one or more siblings, your feelings and relationship with said sibling or siblings goes through stages. When you are a little kid and your parents come home with a brand new adorable baby, you might feel jealous. Check. I totally felt jealous when my sister was born. I had a tough time. At first, I didn't see what the big deal was with the baby. All she did was eat, sleep, poop, and cry. To be honest, I didn't like her at all. Then when I fed her for the first time, it felt real. I don't know how to explain it. It felt special. As time progressed, I grew to love my sister. She was actually fun, smart, curious, and kind. When we were little, we were partners in crime. Everywhere I went, my sister Ernesto, I named her after my favorite grandpa, would go too. All that time together created a powerful bond and made me not only love my sister, but also I felt very protective of her. And then we grew up into teens and tweens and inevitably discovered the opposite sex, and the opposite sex notices us. When Ernesto was in middle school and high school, the opposite sex began to notice her. I wasn't stunned. Ernesto grew into a beautiful girl. I didn't think anything of it until my friends commented on how good looking my sister was. I felt a tightness in my back and a sense of worry. That was silly because all my guy friends were not dogs, if you know what I mean. Also, I knew that they would not even consider dating my sister. My female friends were also part of the conversation about my sister's appearance and they warned me about when she started dating. My sister dating, that was a horrifying thought. I read the news. I heard about creeps being inappropriate with young ladies. I was experiencing a feeling of protectiveness, and that was a natural thing when it comes to our family. My friend Cheyenne told me so. She said that it was good that I was protective of Ernie, because then any dogs would know to stay away. My friend Alex agreed. Jay, if you are as protective of Ernesto as you are with us, I don't think any boy would try anything, Alex said. Really? I asked, surprised. Oh, definitely, Alex said. Nobody bothers us because they know that you would stick up for us just as we would stick up with you. Yeah, Cheyenne chimed in. With you protecting her, she's safe forever. And besides, Alex continued, doesn't she take the same boxing and martial arts training that you do? Yes, I smiled laughing a little bit. Those are for focus and discipline. And you used that focus and discipline on Blake a few years ago. Cheyenne laughed. Yes, I did, I said, remembering that day with pride. And I bet Ernesto is even more skilled than you are, Alex said. That was because it was a little known fact that Ernesto was better at nearly everything than me, which also made me proud. I mean, my sister was a real formidable force of nature, and I had helped her to make her so. She still is. I don't think you have anything to worry about, Cheyenne had said. I was convinced there was no need to worry. Later, I learned that Ernie had a rep for being a badass, which made me feel all the more secure about her safety from predatory boys. That was until her boyfriend came over to pick her up for a date. Kevin. When I first heard of this boy, I didn't think anything of it. It was spring, and Early was a high school sophomore. She wasn't driving, but was learning. I heard her mention this boy's name often in the form of Kevin says that, or OMG, Kevin said the funniest thing today. The more she spoke of this clever, funny boy with long eyelashes, the more I began to get that protective feeling. I was concerned. It was clear that she liked this boy. I mean, she couldn't go five minutes without talking about him. I was sure she and her friends called him McDreamy, or one of the other silly nicknames that girls assign to people, but Ernie was not the nickname sort of girl. Who was this guy? Whatever, I was sure she would get bored with his company sooner or later. But she didn't bore of his company at all. Instead, she would have one of our parents drop her off at the movies, the mall, the skate park, all to spend time with this boy. They ate lunch together at school. They ate pizza together during study sessions. They hung out at least one day a weekend. Oh, and they were always on the phone. When her phone privileges were announced to be in danger, I thought Ernesto's head would explode. I had never seen her like this. She always only used the phone to make plans with her friends. Ernie was rarely on her phone, talking for long periods. I worried about this boy. Who was he? Did he know that Ernesto's life now appeared to revolve around him? Would he break her heart? I contemplated a visit to Mr. Green, 
who was still the biology teacher at my old high school, to see if I could catch a glimpse of this dreamy, funny, witty, long eyelash-having mystery boy. I could just follow him around and observe. It would be like I was stalking or spying. I just wanted to make sure that he was a decent guy, and possibly to scowl at him menacingly. Luckily, I didn't have to stalk Kevin at school, because he got his driver's license and was now going to pick Ernie up for a date on Friday. I can say that it saved me from being a creeper and making a fool of myself at my old school. It did not assuage my anxiety though. This Kevin had a car. Cars are places where kids hook up. I planned for my meeting with this hunk who was going to prey on my sister. I planned where I would sit, what I would say. I would scowl at this boy and make sure that he knew where he stood in my eyes and I would make sure that his intentions with my sister were entirely honorable. At 6.15, I positioned myself on the sofa that faced the front door, pretending to read my textbook. I wore clothes that made me look bigger. I also put my book about venomous snakes next to me, open to a page featuring a shiny picture of an eyelash pit viper and one of the damages that the snake's bite creates. Good, I thought. This little turd Kevin will be terrified. I smiled and waited, and then the knock at the door came. Come on in, I called not moving from my seat. Thanks, said the boy who was walking through the open door. I'm Kevin. He offered his hand to shake. He didn't look like a perv who would prey on my sister. He looked like a nerd, like me. He was tall with curly red hair and freckles. He had pale green eyes. His eyelashes were pretty impressive. I wondered if he used some sort of lengthener or something. What are you reading? Kevin asked cheerfully with genuine interest. I'm reading about venomous snakes, I said, smiling what I thought was a menacing smile. I'm a bio major and will be working in the rainforest. I have learned nearly everything I could know about venom. Hint, hint, hint. Read. I will find a venomous snake and make it bite you, causing necrotizing fasciitis, among other things. I prepared for a stuttering, fearful response. It didn't come. Cool. I'm really interested in herpetology. Kevin smiled. I'm going to major in biology when I go to college. Hey, maybe you could give me pointers. Ernie said that you are interested in ornithology. Birds are my other favorite critters to study. I was shocked. Kevin was a nerd, just like me. He even liked birds. This couldn't be the same Kevin. This guy was cool. When Ernie came down the stairs to greet him, she looked over at my open snake book, and she hugged Kevin. She squinted her eyes at me, giving me the look. Kevin sat down next to me as my parents came into the living room. More hands were shaken, greetings were exchanged, mom offered drinks, Kevin accepted a soda. As we sat around talking, I learned that Kevin had just received his license and was saving for a car. He worked at a wildlife rehab that his father ran. I learned that he was interested in herpetology, ornithology, conservation, journalism, and saving the world. Throughout the conversation, both my parents commented several times. You remind us so much of Jay, and Ernesto saying that's what she thought when she first met him. After Ernesto and Kevin left for their date, I felt better. I was confident Kevin was a good guy. How silly I was for thinking that my sister, who was always right about everything, would like any guy who was not a decent guy. I also liked the fact that Ernie liked someone who reminded her of me. I liked the idea that I was a model to her of what she wanted in a boy that made me feel very proud. It still does. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you like the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.